It is Tuesday, the 12th of November. Good morning and welcome to THG News Today on THG Network. My name is Mervyn Hanley. If this is your first time here with us this morning, we welcome you and I trust that you appreciate the content that we share with you on a daily basis. The news, of course, is powered by Carl and Sons Unique Bakery on the island of St. Martin. Um, let's get right to the news this morning and we begin with some very disturbing news out of Haiti. Uh, yesterday afternoon, Spirit Airlines flight N. 966NK en route from Fort Lauderdale to Port-au-Prince, Haiti, was hit by gunfire while attempting to land. The pilots swiftly aborted the landing and diverted to the Dominican Republic, where the plane safely touched down. Reports indicate one flight attendant sustained a minor injury and bullet holes were discovered in the aircraft. Authorities, including the FAA, are now investigating the serious incident. This is not just a serious incident. This is terrorism and to attack a U.S. airline, international airline. This is terrorism. And I, I, I can't understand what, what will it take and why governments, whether CARICOM, U.S., that they cannot get Haiti under control, these thugs in Haiti under control. So imagine the flight is landing. And what are they doing so close? Knowing the situation on Haiti, why are people, how, how are they able to get so close an airline to fire gunshots and injuring folks on that aircraft? No, this this can't continue. These thugs. Anyway, I won't even say what I, I think of them or I, ri I wish for them at this time. This is crazy. This is absolute craziness. We now move on to news out of Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, the Prime Minister, Gaston Brown, he has cancelled the ABST concession over failure to rebuild a hotel wing. Prime Minister Gaston Brown has announced the cancellation of the long-standing Antigua and Barbuda sales tax concession, ABST, granted to Sandals Resorts International, citing the company's failure to fulfill its promise to rebuild an aging wing of its Antigua property. Speaking on Point FM, according to the Antigua newsroom, Brown revealed that four years ago, the government had agreed to waive a portion of Sandals' ABST obligations in exchange for a commitment from the company to renovate the original wing of its hotel, which is now over 40 years old. Brown explained that the concession was intended to incentivize Sandals to make substantial upgrades to its facilities, ensuring that the property remained competitive in Antigua's vital tourism sector. However, he criticized the resort chain for not delivering on this commitment, describing the situation as a breach of trust that has cost the government millions in foregone tax revenue. We made this concession in good faith, expecting Sandals to reinvest their property and elevate the destination, Brown stated. Four years later, there is no new building. There is no new build. Yet, Sandals has continued to benefit from these tax breaks. Following Sandals' failure to meet its renovation obligations, Brown announced that the government has now revoked the ABST concession. The waived ABST arrangement has instead allowed the company to reduce its tax burden without delivering the anticipated improvements according to Brown. He estimated that Sandals has saved millions over the past several years through these deductions, which the government now aims to redirect back into public revenue. As tensions rise, Sandals has yet to issue a response to the Prime Minister. And again, I may sound like a broken record when I say this, but you have to commend and shake the hands of Prime Minister Gaston Brown. Because when it comes to his country and when it comes to his people, fights like a bulldog. And he stands up to anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. He's, he, he does, he's not afraid of you. And I know that investors, they will come to one's country. And if for some reason, leaders and politicians and ministers of government, they feel that they have to kiss, you know, they feel they have to do that. They feel they have to suck up to these guys and take whatever. And in that way, compromise the trust and the, 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 the defense for the people. You're supposed to be there protecting your island and your people. But when it comes to Gaston Brown and this Sandal situation has been going on for a while. And I can also tell you that I am not going to report on it today, but I'm sure you've heard. But if you have not, I'll tell you now that it was only last week or a week before the prime minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, he said to Sandals publicly on radio, listen, I'm so fed up of you guys. You can take your property and leave. Why? Because not only um, they have breached the, 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 the understanding or the contract they had with the government regarding upgrading their facility, their hotel, their hotel development property, but they have not been paying taxes 
or according to the treasury, over 20 million and something dollars plus dollars they have not paid outstanding to the government, to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And Prime Minister Brown is saying, no, we've had enough. You're not paying. You're not living up to your obligations in terms of the promises made to the government when you came to that property, that facility. And so we've had enough of you and you can take your hotel and go. He said that just how I just said it to you. He said that on radio just over a week ago. And that's what I admire about leaders. When you fight for your people, when you fee- when you- you're not in the position for yourself and your family or your wife, your children or whomever, your friends. And that is why Gaston Brown will continue to be re-elected and re-elected and re-elected. And you can call him a dictator, whatever you want to call him. But he continues every day for the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And I have maximum respect for that man for doing that. Still in Antigua and Barbuda, um, Prime Minister Gaston Brown has called for urgent reforms within key government departments following allegations of invoices being validated for work that was either incomplete or not performed at all. Speaking on Point FM, Brown expressed concern over systematic inefficiencies and the potential misuse of public funds, specifically naming the Public Works Department, the National Solid Waste Management Authority, and the Treasury as areas where this troubling practice has been identified. Brown outlined a pattern of behavior in which contractors submit invoices for services that were only partially completed or in some cases not completed at all. Despite this, officials with certain departments reportedly validate these invoices, allowing payments to be processed without proper verification. The Prime Minister stressed that this practice is not only a waste of taxpayer funds, but also undermines public trust in government institutions. This kind of mismanagement is unacceptable. When invoices are being approved for work that hasn't been done, it's a clear betrayal of the public's trust and misuse of their money, Brown said. Our citizens deserve better. They deserve to know that their taxes are funding real, tangible improvements not being wasted on unaccounted transactions. Brown emphasized that his administration has invested heavily in infrastructure and public services, providing departments with the necessary funds to carry out essential projects. However, he expressed frustration that these investments are not translating into results on the ground due to administrative bottlenecks and a lack of accountability across multiple government agencies. Among the, exa- among the examples he cited were instances within the National Solid Waste Management Authority, where contractors reportedly continue to bill for garbage collection services despite equipment breakdowns that hampered their ability to fulfill their obligations. Brown also criticized the Treasury for processing these invoices without adequate scrutiny, enabling the problem to persist unchecked. These practices are widespread across some of our public institutions, and it has to stop. We need stricter checks in place to ensure that only completed and verified work is being paid, Brown remarked. He hinted at potential administrative restructuring if departments fail to address these issues, signaling his government's intent to prioritize transparency and accountability. Our priority is the public's interest, and we cannot allow their hard-earned money to be squandered, Brown concluded. We must act decisively, create a system that rewards accountability and ensures that the people of Antigua and Barbuda get the services they deserve. Good stuff. Really good stuff. And I trust that other governments, that you would follow the footsteps of this great leader. Some governments, mind you, are doing their jobs. They're doing it great, but there are many. And finally, in our news this morning, in a significant boost to St. Uh, Kitts' tourism industry, I almost said St. Kitts and Nevis's industry, but this is the same side of things, the St. Kitts tourism industry. American Airlines has announced the resumption of its expanded flight service, providing enhanced connectivity between Miami International Airport and RLB International Airport in St. Kitts. This move strengthens the island's accessibility, supporting its position as a premier Caribbean destination. For 2024, American will operate two flights, um, that should be 20, oh, 2024, in 2024, they're now operating two flights per week between Miami and St. Kitts on the following dates, um, and this will be December 7th and 14th on Saturdays, and then December 19th through the 31st. In 2025, American will continue offering two daily flights between January 1st to April 3rd, and then on Saturdays, April 5th to August 30th. American will deploy the Boeing 737 aircraft, offering 16 business class seats and the Airbus A321 aircraft with 20 business class seats. In addition to flights to Miami, American will continue operating 
um, the existing Saturday service from St. Kitts to Charlotte and the JFK International Airport serving New York City. We are thrilled to strengthen our partnership with American Airlines, which demonstrates their confidence in Sinkets as a premier destination. This expanded flight schedule aligns perfectly with our efforts to increase visitor arrivals and boost our tourism economy, according to Honorable Marsha T. Henderson, Minister of Tourism. With enhanced airlift, we can welcome more travelers, offering them the unique opportunity to experience both the tranquility and adventure that Sinkets has to offer. Our collaboration with airline partners is essential for improving connectivity and ensuring that every visitor enjoys a seamless and unforgettable travel experience. American Airlines has a commitment with St. Kitts of more than 25 years, and we are proud to serve as the largest U.S. airline operating in the island with service from our hubs in Miami, Charlotte, and New York City. And that's according to the managing director for the Central America and the Caribbean. Yeah, so that's how, that's something great happening there on St. Kitts regarding the um, American Airlines flight. So you guys, no more um, flights are all booked out. You've got flights to your disposal there from St. Kitts, from American to JetBlue to you know, United to British Airways to that uh, those flights that, that tra goes to um, the Dominican Republic. I mean, Liat to Winia to, is it, what is it, Sunwing or Sun, whatever that is. You have, you've got all the flights, all the flights out of our international import. What I would like them to do, however, the government to try to, to do something with the improvement and the development, redevelopment of the RLB international airport. It needs some upgrades. It needs some upgrades. Yeah. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we've just concluded THG News today, Tuesday, 12th November. My name is Mervyn Hanley. Do join me again tomorrow morning, God's willing, at six o'clock Atlantic Standard Time or whenever you get the opportunity or the time to just be here on the Networks channel. We thank you. And um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone. Arlen Sons have been serving the people of St. Martin for over 40 years. And the food and service get better and better. From early morning, customers flock to the bakery for their favorite sandwiches, cakes, pastries, you name it. First thing at mornings and last thing at afternoons, folks rush to Carl and Sons for simply the best. There are two locations, Cold Bay and on the Pondville. In Cold Bay, the opening hours are Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sundays, 6.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Opening hours on the Pondville, Monday to Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 6.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. We also cater for weddings, parties, special events, whatever the occasion. It's Carl and Sons. Our staff, we are always happy to serve you. Call us today, the Colby location, 721-544-2462. That's 721-544-2462. Or in Phillipsburg, 721-543-1059. That's 721-543-1059. It's Carl and Sons Bakery. We are here to serve you. Nevis, satisfy your sweet tooth at Feezers, the cozy spot in Charlestown, known for its mouth-watering ice cream and dal parade. We are open Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come in and sample our patties, sandwiches, ear fried wings with fries, hot dogs, rotis, and now our famous smoothies, in all flavors, of course. And don't forget to try the famous bus of shut and saltfish. It's Feezers, located at the entrance of the Cotton Jewelry Mall in Charlestown, Nevis. They are also available by phone, so place your order by calling 1-869-665-2458. Don't ask about the rest, just try the best.